So we go to Chris Logan. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, may I, uh, uh, first of all, uh, say to the Leader, on Friday, October the 23rd in this chamber, I called on all members of the House to support the Government's commitment to ban live animal exports. I was delighted to hear this morning an announcement by the Government and the Secretary of State for the Environment that we would continue to do that. Can I ask the Leader to, to make sure we can bring that forward as soon as possible? Um, but, Madam Deputy Speaker, may I, uh, on a more pertinent and uh, closer point to home right now, um, say that the coronavirus regulations, as we all know, were passed earlier this week. It put rural West Dorset and vast swathes of rural England into Tier 2. I very much support the Government's refreshed approach to regional, uh, uh, regional tiering, but I do believe that a more localised approach should be possible. Can I, can I ask the Leader, please, that when the review comes in two weeks' time, that, that the House can give proper scrutiny to this issue? Leader of the House. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I'm grateful for my honourable friend's point on live animal exports. That is something we can do as we're leaving the European Union. So it's another advantage of being free to make our own laws. Um, with regard to um, the placing of areas in each tier, that will be reviewed every fortnight, with the first review taking place on the 16th of December. The Government is keenly aware of the views of members across the House. Decisions will continue to be based on a range of indicators, including analysis of cases across age groups and the rate by which cases are rising or falling. There will certainly be plenty of opportunities to discuss these matters in the House. Indeed, there have been frequent oral statements, and more Government time has been made available for general debates on COVID.